going to talk about the, you know, as a segue here, the utilization of the luminos in the proximal humerus. I think it's one of the most useful places for its application. It's not necessarily a reduction tool, but I think it's certainly helpful in may helping you maintain reduction. And it's a very useful adjunct to the use of both plates and nails for proximus fixation. So, um, so, I can... so just as some background for those who aren't familiar with the implant itself, it's um, essentially a tube, Dacron-like tube filled with uh, methyl methacrylate. And so it comes in a liquid format and the tube comes <clears throat> collapsed in a variety of different um, sizes that it can be expanded to, to suit your particular application. And when you get it into the position you want it in, you inflate it with the um, methacrylate and then a light mechanism activates it so it can harden. And once it's hardened, it's, it's solid. It's just like um, similar to methyl methacrylate and um, you can drill through it and it's, um, it's very good at supporting uh, bone and reduction. So as I mentioned, it comes in pre predefined shape. There's different shapes. Some of them are tubes, some of them are more uh, asymmetrical um, and um, it's very, it, you can choose the shape that's most suitable for your application. So the first case is gonna be a 62 year old female, low energy fall. These are all gonna be essentially low energy falls in older patients because I think um, this tool is most useful in osteopenic bone as a means to support osteopenic bone. So here we have this uh, fracture. You can see it's valgus impacted. Proximus fracture with a separate greater tuberosity fragment. Um, we wanna restore that alignment of the proximal humerus um, to um, improve the, the function of the muscle in the cuff. So here we are in the OR, we've got this uh, the fracture again, valgus aligned. We can use a reduction tool. You know, Steve showed use of the Holman, uh, the tip of the Holman, which I find very useful as well, more in the uh, cortical bone. In this area, I'll use something more broad, like an elevator, for example, and you can get it into that fracture site and use it to sort of elevate the head so you can reduce it to its normal alignment. And then I can put the tuberosity back and pin it in place with some wires as a form of temporary uh, fixation. And next we would get our guide wire in for our entry point for the luminous implant. So in the proximal humerus, it goes in basically the same way you put in a uh, humeral nail. Um, you can find that area right at the border of the articular surface. And you can make your entry point there with the, the K wire followed by either um, a reamer or um, you can use an awl um, to gain access to the canal. So uh, once we have made that entry point, we can then put a guide wire down the shaft and then there's a sleeve that goes over it, which you can sort of see here because it's a little bit radio opaque. And that helps you sort of position the um, position in the, in the shaft where you're gonna put the implant. Um, in this case, we wanted to use an intramedullary nail for our form of fixation, but we wanted to use it with the Lunas implant. So we left the sleeve in place and we inserted the nail next to the sleeve leaving the luminos mostly medial to the nail. And then once we had the nail in the position we wanted, we would then expand the luminos implant. And here you can actually see the implant expanding. It has radiographic uh, markers on it. So in that second image, you can see the coils. So you can see how it's now expanded to its full amount. And then we can allow it to harden in place. And this serves a couple of purposes. Primarily, it's filling that area underneath the humeral head. And as we know in these elderly patients, when the humeral head is impacted, when you restore its alignment, you're left with this void. And uh, that void is, a, is an area of weakness in your construct. And it's an opportunity to put something there to hold it up. And of course, you know, Lorich and, um, published a lot on this with the use of a fibular strut, which uh, works well, but I would argue that this works a little better and is a little more easy, you're easier to use uh, in this situation. So the luminosity is essentially filling that void underneath the head so that one of the complications that we see when the humerus fails is that the head may collapse. It can collapse sort of directly down um, on to back to its other position. And if it does that, when you have hardware in there, this hardware becomes prominent in the glamour humeral joint. 
So the luminosity implant I find is very useful for supporting the head to prevent that collapse. And once you have it in there, you then complete your fixation through the nail. And then the nice thing here is that the uh, locking bolts, as you can see, are going through the aluminos implant. So the locking bolts themselves, particularly in the proximal humerus, are not very stable, right? Because they're going through cortex and the nail, and they don't really engage another cortex. Um, but in this situation, they're going through the cortex, thin cortex, nail, and then this implant, which is fixed in the canal, filling the canal, not going anywhere. So it provides a second point of fixation for them. So essentially, they become fixed angle um, in this situation. So it forms a very stable construct when used, when used together. And this is the follow-up at 11 months. This patient's healed. There would be no change in the alignment of that proximal humerus. It hasn't collapsed um, and no complications. This is a, a similar case. So we have a seven-year-old female, low energy fall. Again, with this valgus impacted humerus fracture, you can see it's very valgus impacted. It's really like a cone, um, a cone with a ball of ice cream on top of it. So we wanna restore that alignment. Again, similar uh, fashion. We uh, want to get under that head and reduce it back to its normal alignment. In this situation, again, I use the freer, but and sometimes when things are a little more unstable, I like to reduce that head to the glenoid and then hold it in place with a single K wire, just to give me something stable to build back to. And I do that particularly when there's a little more instability between the head fragment and the shaft fragment. Maybe the medial hinge isn't quite intact or some comminution there. So I did it in this situation. And then um, you can see on the far right on the bottom, I've got an aluminous implant in that canal now. And then I'm going from left to right, you can see the implant inflated in the canal. And here now it's at maximal diameter and we allow it to harden. We reduce that tuberosity fragment. We no longer, once the implant is in, in there and inflated, we no longer need the K-wire crossing the glenohumeral joint to support the head in this position. It's gonna sit on the implant in a stable position. And at that point, then we can apply the plate, your typical locking plate. Um, you'll see on the far right, the uh, screw aiming towards the calcar, which was important, uh, important for um, preventing kind of varus collapse in these proximus fractures. Um, we had some additional screws towards the calcar. And again, just like with the intramedullary nail, these screws, they're fixed angle with the plate, but they're also going through the luminosity implant. There's a lot of stability provided by this overall construct combining the two implants. And there's no possibility for the head to collapse because the luminosity is filling that space underneath the head. And again, as the two main things we see when these have failed is either they fall off in varus, like Steve showed in, in a lot of his um, cases from that paper, or the head just collapses back onto the implant. And when that happens, these locking screws end up protruding through the glenar through the subchondral bone into the glenohumeral joint. So this last case, um, another proximus fracture, and this this one um, sort of shows you how this implant could be used a little bit like a reduction aid in some ways. So we've got this um, surgical neck fracture. You can see the malalignment. You can see the translation of the shaft. Um, again, we're using the free elevator. We're trying to lever that piece over into the right position to restore the alignment. We're putting a guide wire in to um, sort of as provisional fixation. We add a second guide wire through the Navazier port Vaser portal, which is, is quite helpful. You could put a nail, you could put the luminous implant through this portal as well, which is just superior where the acromion and the, the clavicle and the AC joint meet. Um, in this case, we put a wire in there to hold the reduction while we used our initial wire as the entry point for our luminous implant. And you can again see the sleeve in place and the implant in place, and then we inflate the implant. But as we inflate the implant, you can see that it's translating um, the fragment a little bit. Um, it's the proximal fragment lateral relative to the distal fragment. We're getting some malreduction at the calcar. And as Steve mentioned, you really want to get a good reduction on these, these fractures. So we're going to, with the implant inflated, we're going to gently maneuver it over to push more medially, just like you would do with a fibular strut when we used to use more of those, to push it more medially, to push it up against that calcar to, to reduce the medial aspect of the humerus fracture line and make it smooth contour again. Um, one important thing I didn't really illustrate in the other images, but in this case, and something I point out a lot with my residents is always check the other view. It's very common to have a perfect looking AP reduction and have some malalignment in the um, sagittal plane. So here you can see it's not quite lined up in the sagittal plane. We've got that 
uh, elevator in there pushing the implant medial. We're just going to correct that alignment before we engage the light source to harden the aluminos. So once we're satisfied with the alignment, we harden the aluminos and then we apply our plate just like with the other previous technique. And this is our follow-up. And um, this, is a, this was a more recent case. I guess I don't have the latest follow-up. But anyway, it did heal um, and the patient did well. And again, the important thing, no collapse, right? The luminosity implant really provided this, a good support filling that area underneath the head to prevent any collapse that, that um, a humeral head, which is really the, uh, something we really have to worry about in these older patients with poor quality bone. 